Welcome to the Invincible Innovation Show, the podcast for changemakers. Each week, I talk to the most fascinating entrepreneurs and innovation leaders about innovation, strategy, and design. Hey, everyone. Great to see you. Welcome to Invincible Innovation Live. Today, we'll talk about emerging technologies and how to discover them. I'm Adima Zorkario, Innovation and Value Creation Expert, and I'll be your host. And today with me, I have Florian Wolf. Hey, welcome, Hi, Florian. Great to see you. Florian is the founder and CEO of Mergeflow, and they are uh, in the emerging technologies uh, um, business, and he could help us with that question, and I'm sure it's going to be very interesting. So uh, we are live on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook, and, and you're much invited to join us and join the discussion and ask questions. We'd be very happy to have you here. So, Florian, let's start. So why do you think that data is, is so important and technology is so important for innovation? Well, I guess you know, if you don't have data, it's, you're doing guesswork, right? So yeah. uh, uh, that's why you need data. And you also need to, when the, the data that we collect and analyze is basically what you see when you look outside of your organization. And uh, mm -hmm. so when you do something like you know, build, making new products or developing new technologies, You, you don't you don't do that in a vacuum right there is a context there right. are other people who do things that could support what you do there might be other people who do similar things people or companies yeah uh, there are markets that you might not be aware of yet uh, but that could be interesting for you to to sell your your to, to markets into sure um, and and there are you know, research projects all kinds of things and, yeah. and you should really be aware of that because it could help you you Uh, not just in the sense of you know competitive intelligence but also in in the sense of is is are there any ideas out there that could help me build my thing better faster for sure example? I think that when you are inside this organization inside your company or inside your domain even you don't think about like is it that innovative and creative what I thought about it is it a very good idea or not it could be a very good idea for your organization but maybe your competitors are doing much better and you need to know that so yeah. so yeah Uh, you and, just brought up a really important point, which I think is, is a domain. It's not just about your company or your organization. It's also within your domain because very often really interesting new innovations come from completely different unexpected domains. So you need to look yeah. there too. Yeah, so you have knowledge or, or a product or a service that could be applicable for other domains and you don't know that. Yeah, yes. or there could be something coming out of a different domain that could, uh, you know, that, 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 could, uh, that could make you obsolete. Uh, that can happen yeah. too. Uh, yeah. and, and so you need to re really have a broad view on, on all kinds of things going on outside your right. organization and outside your, uh, your own domain, I would say. Yeah, and, and let's imagine that you don't know that and you did not research enough what's going on outside your, your own uh, domain and organization. You might go to market and then find out that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. which is yeah. the worst use case. Yeah, yeah, then you're in for a surprise. And uh, so, yeah. That's for sure. So what's the biggest obstacle to technological innovation? Well, I think currently uh, we're all in a very special situation, right? So there is uh, right. Uh, resources, right? That's, that's a big challenge. Uh, in, in, in some, or uh, you know, to some people, it's, it's a challenge that they cannot go to places. Right. Um, because they cannot, for example, if you're, uh, let's say you're, you're an M&A, right? You're, uh, you're evaluating if you should purchase a company. You, mm -hmm. in, with software, You could you can do a lot of things online online meetings and so on but if it's about materials or hardware uh, you might want to look at manufacturing facilities or you know labs and so on uh, so that's harder to do at the moment yeah and uh, you're right I, I you know I just noticed that usually when I talk I, I just said okay we're in the middle of the covid crisis so you should know that and now I I said I said like you We're not in the middle. We don't know if we're in the middle or not. So <laughs> it's, it's like I cannot say that anymore. Like it's, it's longer than a small stage that I could just indicate that in the middle of discussion just to let you know. 
and most people know where we are. So uh, yeah, we need to to be to think about it. Um, how can can companies discover and track emerging technologies, which is so hard to find a way to collect all this data and all the the points outside my organization? They can sign up to Merchflow. <laughs> yeah, so um, so, so tell, tell us what do, will they find? Let's say they did. What will they uh, find there? Yeah, um, I think it's important to, uh, to to consider that it's it's actually not companies, it's people. It's always people who do this. And uh, mm-hmm. so what can these people do? It's the one one challenge is the, uh, I guess, the, the overwhelming uh, amount and speed and variety of data that you have to consider. So you need some kind of automation to deal with that. Um, but even if you don't do that, I think there is something else you should have, which is a certain kind of mindset, right? You need to be curious, which... If you're not curious, yeah. uh, it's it's hard to do innovation. And right. I think what's related to that is, uh, I guess it's 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 intellectual hum- humility, right? You should be, mm. uh, if uh, you, you should uh, you should realize that there might be for for anything you do, there might be someone out there who has a better way of doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And Another, sometimes you're afraid to find out that there is someone like yeah. that outside. Yeah, and I guess there are two ways in which you could deal with that. Uh, you could be afraid uh, or you could say, well, actually, this is useful because that allows me to build something that's even better on top of that other idea. Um, right. But that's, a, a, that's, that's not an easy thing to do, but I think it's important. Um, and and you need grit, right? You need to be, you know, because when you build something, uh, most things will fail. Uh, yeah. So you need to see that through. Yeah. I think those are the, uh, curiosity, it, humility, grit. Yeah, I agree. What you said about humility is something that most people, when they think about entrepreneurs, they don't think about humility. They think they have this big ego and they're sure about themselves. But actually the fact that you don't know or you know that you don't know Is, is such a powerful thing that you are curious to see maybe there is something very interesting outside that you are not aware of. And yeah, and yeah. so it's really un- important to think about entrepreneurs there is, is ha- they have this character. Yeah, and, or anyone who builds new things, right? You don't have to be yeah. an entrepreneur, but anyone who, who makes new technologies, products and, and so on. And uh, yeah. I guess what, some, what, what surprises me often is that The people who are really, really good at what, whatever it is they do, in my experience, uh, they are all very humble in that sense. Yeah. Um, right? they, they know that there is that there are other that there are lots of other people out there who are, uh, who are very smart um, and, and, but, but they tap into this as an opportunity, I think. Yeah. I think that there are points in your life that you understand that even if you're sure that you're very smart, there are so many smart people around you. You just need to meet them. I yeah. think we, we said that in our last meeting, uh, you mentioned that when you came, to, I think, to MIT, right? Where mm-hmm. you, yeah. So, yeah. So that was your experience when you came there, right? I think it's pretty much everyone's experience who gets there because you know, in order to get there, you have to be, so you have to be, well, it's not easy to get there. But sure. then when you get there, um, you realize that, oh, shit, there are a lot of smart people and uh, yeah. you know, smarter people. And uh, so that's kind of an ego. Uh, it, it's not an ego boost. <laughs> yeah. Ego uh, equalizer. It's uh, equalizing your, your ego. Yeah. Uh, and then after a while, you know it as well. It's actually a good thing because it's a lot of opportunities. Uh, I can get a lot further when I connect with those people than if I you know, try to just do my own thing. Yeah, when you collaborate and not only uh, compete with them. So yeah. you, could, you could do much, much more. And what we're talking about is the option not only to compete with others, but to collaborate if you find something which, is, which could be interesting for your company as, as a collaboration, not only yeah. as a competition. You, you can do that or you can just sort of you know, be inspired. Like you, can, you can find interesting research, for example, discover someone's built a new algorithm or something like that and, and then say, well, you yeah, know, that's interesting. But now that I see this, I have this other idea that would make this even better. Yeah. Um, It's like so building uh, on the shoulders of, of others. Yeah. And, and it makes your life easier. As long as you are not afraid to find out that others are smart and others are doing things that are similar and others might compete with you. So uh, yeah. as long as you are not afraid of that, that, that could be very interesting. Yeah. So what are the emerging technologies that grew to this COVID crisis? 
I think oh, there is. A, yeah, we have, we have, we, you sent, let's add that. Yeah, let's, let's see. So, so first you, you gave us a few like graphs from merge flow. Yeah. So what you see here is, is data that uh, is, uh, comes out of our platform. And, and this is not a surprise, right? Everybody knows right. that telemedicine is something the, the red boxes indicate sort of COVID time, time frame. Yeah. So you yeah. can see this is, especially if, when you look at science publications, it's, it's shooting up. Wow. And we all know that. And there are a, a lot of other technologies where we all know that, like, uh, you know, um, web meetings, like yeah. what we do now, for example. Um, yeah, but, but it's great to see that you have the venture capital, the scientific uh, publications and the clinical trials all yeah. together in one. Uh, they you can find all these touch points which are very different. So uh, one is like mm -hmm. capital, how much money is spent on that and what, who is studying that and what's the trial. So it's like different yeah. touch points in order to set to find that. So let's think about other yeah. uh, topics. So you give us another topic which is not related in any sense to, to COVID, mm -hmm. uh, solid state batteries. So first ex explain what solid state batteries and why it's so Im important. First of all, I'm I'm not a battery expert by any means, so yeah, me uh, I just uh, I just read up a few things on. It. But uh, it's it's a new way of making batteries, uh, which are uh, you know, have higher de energy density and are safer, but they're very expensive to make. Oh. Um, and but because they have this uh, high energy density and and they are safer, they cannot spill. Right, it's solid, so you cannot they cannot crack and, and spill and and explode and. Um, mm. They're hard to make, and I was, I was looking for. I wanted to find sort of emerging technologies that where I would, where it's hard to see a COVID connection, right? It's. I think it would mm -hmm. be difficult to argue that this is growing because of COVID. I, I yeah, would I would sad. not imagine that in, in there is this very very big gap in R and D funding 2020, and and I would not imagine that this kind of like non relevant to the crisis topic would be funded so well. It's really yeah. surprising. Um, yeah, I, I think it's it's not that someone said, oh, we have COVID, so let's fund solid state batteries. Yeah, of uh, course. But still, the fact that it did not decrease yeah, that's 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 a point that you should, you should like think about. Why is it so important that it was not damaged in any sense, and and vice versa, during yeah. this crisis? And we have another graph that you sent me, and this is the connection between researchers. So yeah. what you see here. So is, this is very busy. I realize, and I realize that you yeah. cannot read the. Then each each red yeah. dot is a, a corresponds to a person that our software extracted from those yeah. science publications during that time. What I basically wanted to see is, is this research coming out of one team? Is is all of this like, do they now? Do we just see this this uh, spike in in R and D publications because they all now have the time to sit down and write their papers? Um, yeah. And um, because that would be an easy explanation, but. Sure. Um, then if that were true, I think we would have seen that in other fields too, which we don't. And um, uh, what this shows is that uh, each each one, each one group of red dots is basically a team of researchers that collaborate in some way and, and mm. publish together. So you can see yeah. it's you know, it's a number of different groups. And Yeah, uh, you see ma many connected dots. If you're on the podcast, I could show uh, tell you that you see connected dots. Each one is a researcher and you see these clusters of, of people working together. I think it's beautiful yeah. to see that people are collaborating in in general. So it's it's beautiful to see these communities of researchers doing wonderful things and 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 creating new stuff together. I think yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah, for sure. So so we see that some of the technologies are related to COVID, and some of them are have. I wouldn't have any clue that this is what's going on without really using merge flow in order to know that, right? So I, I, I would need to field, research. But... Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you're in that field, you probably know. But uh, I picked that topic because I thought it's interesting to see that yeah, it's not that the world came to a screeching halt in all aspects. It's there is still a lot of interesting things going on, and and money right. is being invested. You saw that in the research funding. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it, by the way, I think this is something that people sometimes underestimate is how much money uh, governments put into enabling new research. Uh, this yeah. is really important. Uh, it's not just venture funding. It's a lot of that is, and especially for the very early stage stuff, it's it's really government government sponsored. 
Yeah, I, I, I know that we, we have in Israel this uh, Israeli governmental uh, funding for very small and, and, and not mature companies and, and startups. Yeah. And it's really important in order to, for them to have the possibility to grow because when you're yeah. big, you have the resources. When you're small, you only have the idea and the grit and, and being humble and, and curious. That's what you have and, and you need this push of resources and, and it's good that you have it from the government, which is very, yeah. very important. Yeah. So do you have, like you work with, who is the one that will use MergeFlow? It's, it's people who are interested in innovation, in technology, wants to grow into other products and fields, actually? It's, uh, it's usually people who are either scientists, engineers, product managers. Uh, they could be in, in new business, which is often, you know, when, when, uh, a company has a group of people who who are whose whose job is basically to identify new new areas of business for the for the company. Mm, makes um, sense. Interestingly, uh, when I look at our custom or the the, the people we work with, uh, it's not that many that have innovation in their job title. Oh, so um, so are there are te technological people, researchers. Um, yeah, it's they don't have it in their job title, but they do it, right? So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, that in general, innovation is so it's it's only like an umbrella of what people should do in a company. It's not you don't yeah. have to have this in your title in order to be innovative and creative and to make change in your company. Yeah. Um, and, but but you know, like knowing what's going on outside is so important for every company. Usually, when they're looking for other markets or just to know what's going on with the competitors, so they're looking yeah. to to know that. Yeah. But in, in that case, uh, what you aggregate is like from other topics, like from academia, for example. I'm not sure that every um, commercial company would think about academia as the first thing to, to look for when they're looking on te technologies. Uh, yeah, it, so it, it depends, right? So if you are, if it's life sciences, then that is important mm. because there's, uh, in many cases, you see publications also coming out of companies or out of you know, funded startups. Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, in, in, it, it really depends on the area. Uh, in, in software, it can be pretty useful because if someone publishes an algorithm, it's the, the cost of you know, verifying if this thing works are very low compared to, let's say, building a manufacturing plant. Yeah, um, of course. So it, it can be useful, um, but it can be, uh, it's a judgment call you know, when you start making a move like, uh, do you make a move when just the, you know, the first paper on something comes out? Uh, maybe not. Mm. But if, if you see, well, there is something, it's, it's growing. It's not just one paper. There is, uh, there is more stuff going on. Uh, and then if you see that topic spreading into, for example, uh, you know, venture investments, for example, when you, once you start seeing that, then you should really pay attention. Yeah, and this is how you can track things because there are so many emerging technologies. So you cannot read all the papers and know what's going yeah. on. So you need to track some of the uh, technologies that might be relevant for your company. And one once you see this trend going up, you need to to decide if you act upon it or not. Yeah, and yeah, I think uh, in in our experience, what's most interesting in many cases is if you don't just see sort of more of the same so not just more publications or more patents or more investments but if it jumps from one category into the other like if there's a mm -hmm. from zero to one kind of thing like you did not have any market estimates before on this topic but now you have which could indicate that now it's being perceived as a market mm. because, so uh, it's, because it grew so much that you have that yeah so it's um, we have yeah. a cloud computing market, but at some point that was still, yeah, the, there was no markets for that yeah. because people yeah. didn't know what it is. Yeah. So it needs to grow into a certain amount of connections and, and publications and products and services in order to, to say, okay, this is a thing. It's not like a minor thing that one person is doing in his own like basement or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of our customers once said, well, he's looking for things that are vetted in some sense. And, and this vetting process could be that someone puts money into it. Yeah, puts, like this, funding, funding yeah, either be, from a within a company, from a government, whatever. Like, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, or there is a company that, ha like a real company with real customers. Those are all indications that there is a strong interest in a topic, which is uh, you know, more than sort of, I don't want to say just research, but uh, 
Uh, yeah, you know what I mean. It's it's not theoretical only. It's yeah. it's the real thing because customers want it. It's not only yeah. a, a a solution. It has a, a audience and client that might be interested in that. So yeah, uh, it's is... not to say that uh, just research is is not worth paying attention to. Of course, no, and, no. And some, it's... Uh, it triggers interesting discussions. Like you know, it's it's almost like science fiction where you can say, well, what if that, what if what if someone could get that to work? What what would that mean for us? Yeah, right. But in, sometimes you see technology is really growing, but they're not really uh, maturing into a product that people want. They, they, in, in theoretically or in academia, they have lots of importance, but for people's lives, they have no real implications. But once you see yeah. people are really interested in that, it starts to be commercial. Right. Yeah, and, and there is a lot of uh, sort of social phenomena going on as well because it's, uh, for example, if you published in in R and D, it, it's often easier to publish something that doesn't offend anyone. Uh, so it's it's like kind of more of the same thing. Um, yeah, and uh, so, so that's something to to kind of be aware of. I see what you're saying. Right. So, um, what would be like a best tip that you have for change makers and people who want to innovate? Uh, well, apart from you know the the beer and being curious and all those things, I think it's mm -hmm. you cannot do it by yourself. Oh. You need to connect with people. You need to somehow find someone who. Uh, yeah, it's th there is many many different ways of doing this successfully. I think, um, and uh, but what I when when I think about our customers who who do this uh, successfully, one thing that I would say that I notice sometimes is that um, you have teams that are diverse um diverse also in the sense that it's it's young and old people or like you know, um yeah. uh, you you need that kind of diversity too apart sure. from all the other um you know, aspects yeah. of diversity that, that people talk about but i think this yeah. is really important you know i i've been talking to students for the last like months uh, and and i talked to them about what they need to do before they go to the real world into the beginning of their career and I think that most of them are not aware of the contribution they could have when they are coming to a company because they don't know that that's the fact because they don't know they could be so naive and so original and, and to think differently. And, yeah. and what, what they see, especially now when it's very hard for them to find positions because many people who are more like experienced and talented in, in some senses are out there. So it's very yeah. hard for them to to find new positions or their first position actually, and and they are not aware of the advantages. They are just aware that the fact that the company would need to invest time in order to make them more professional and and to give them a, a mentor or or to 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 teach them actually. Yeah. But but what they are bringing the, this new way of thinking and seeing things differently because actually they didn't really do anything before within their this domain is so important especially when you want to be innovative it's like uh, getting kids into into the processes like the way they see things is so important yeah uh, yeah and if you combine that with someone who uh sort of you know knows how the organization works and and uh knows how to orchestrate this, uh, then that can be a really powerful combination. Yeah, I I, th I, I totally agree. I, it reminds me of the movie Big. You do remember Big with Tom Hanks? And, uh, and he, was, he was transformed into a kid. Yeah. He was a grown-up, and then he transformed into a kid. And, and, and then it's like... Um, it, he was a kid transformed into a grown-up, actually. That, that was. And then he went into a toys company. And because he had a mind of a kid, he could contribute more, especially in the domain of toys and kid, for kids, right? And I think that in many cases, when we have an idea, we don't think first about, uh, like, how can we think differently about it? And once we yeah. have diverse team with other cultures, from other genders, from other, like, ages, this is how you can collaborate uh, and think differently. Because yeah. if they're all researchers in a certain degree, they're all seniors, they study in the same institutes, they're in the same domain, they're all older, it's hard for them. Although they're very smart, it's not co connected to yeah. and being smart. It's hard for them to do it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think in, in many cases, doing more of the same only gets you so far. 
Yeah. So could you tell us about a use case from one of your clients that they uh, used Merge Flow and, and really it helped them innovate, uh, be innovative better? Yeah. Um, so there are a couple of different ways in which people use our software. And uh, for example, a few years ago, uh, one of our customers from the chemicals industry, they, they wanted to identify new markets for one of their products. Um, and and um, they were searching the web. It took them about four weeks to do this. Uh, and we said, well, yeah, we think we can probably automate some of that so that in the sense that we collect all that information and automatically extract those market estimates. And so you can search and then you see you know, these are the markets, these are the estimates for the market size because they needed that too. Because if the market is too small, it's not, uh, it wouldn't work for them. In it's that not case, worth the effort. Yeah. And so now you can do this within basically one search, which is, it doesn't just save you a lot of time, but what I think is a lot more important even is that you can now be iterative uh, because almost by definition, when you, when you innovate, when you start out, you, uh, you, you don't really know where you would, where, where you'll go. Sure. So you need to iterate, but you can only iterate if each step, uh, doesn't take four weeks because that's, uh, you cannot iterate. Yeah, I, um, I think it's so important to be fast, especially when you're innovating in the sense that you could decrease the amount of ideas and not increase them. Many people think we need so many ideas in order to, se to select them, but actually what you want yeah. to do is to de-verify what you're thinking because it's better yeah. to know in advance that you're not in the right direction. Yeah. And, 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 and when you're creating a product in many cases, you're going through these stages of researching your market and then thinking about it, an idea and trying to focus on the right one. And it really makes sense that when you do that, you want to make sure that you're focusing on the, the, the right one for you and you want the one that will have an, an impact and you would invest in or the C level will, be, will have the numbers showing that it has this potential to grow and therefore you need to think further about that. Yeah, so, and, and because almost by definition, you, you don't really know what you're doing when you when you set out. Uh, you need to be able to move in small steps. Uh, right? yeah. so, so you need to be able to, uh, it, yeah, th th that's why you need this iteration. Yeah, the iterations uh, and, of, of like yeah. learning. Well, you're trying something and you're learning and then you have something else you want to search and then you're yeah. some, something else and it's like iterative and, and this is how you learn. So actually, I think the advantage of, of innovative companies in general is the fact that they learn so fast because they know yeah. how to do these small iterations and not waste time um, on doing things which are not sure that it's, it's the right direction. Yeah, For and sure. I guess the last thing you want to do in that uh, in that situation is you don't want to spend tons of time on on researching, collecting data, cleaning the data, and all that kind of stuff. Which is why we yeah. build our platform is to make make that part automated as far as possible. Yeah, There's still a course. long way to go, but uh, that's that's the that's the goal is uh, not to have people spend more time with that aspect, but less, so they can focus on actually creating things. Yeah, of course. I think that in general, moving fast is so important for innovation. And in companies, it's so hard for them to move fast because in many cases, they find it risky. And, and if yeah. they have data, it will be less risky for them. It's not that it's not risky because being innovative and, and most startups within a company or, or outside the company will probably fail even if yeah. they have the data, but it, it's like less risk if, if they're on the right direction from the, from the beginning, right? So yeah, and if, if each step is, is uh, smaller, the, um, you know, the, the amount of risk is less too. Yeah. yeah, if you're doing iterations and you're searching from each iteration to the other, you could find the right direction. It's not like sure that it's gonna succeed, but you're in the right path to create something that's uh, it's interesting. It has the potential. People would be prone to, to, to buy it or they're interested in it right now. So you have so many information that you could gather in order to see that, yeah, this is something that we should try. And, and yeah. I'm, I'm using the word try because when you innovate, you're trying, you're, you're doing yeah. experiments. That's what you're yeah. doing. And, and, and you, you wish that one in every eight to 10 experiments will be successful. This is yeah. how you like you this is what you're aiming for yeah. so what do, as, from your experience what is needed for corporates to innovate better uh well it's uh, uh, you need to bring the right people together i think 
which is uh, which is not where we work. We we don't do this sort of uh, the, the the execution. We 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 build software that uh, um, helps people. F spend more time on those kinds of things, but that's the impression that I get when I uh, when I see people from from across industries, across companies, that that's a really important aspect is bring the right people together. Um, yeah, it might be across uh, organizational units. It doesn't mean that you have you should get rid of all this organizational structure. Uh, you need that, but you also need uh, something that uh, transcends that. And, yeah. And, um, there's a great it's, book by uh, Stanley McChrystal. It's called Team of Teams. I think that's team that's the team. approach. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So now I have another book to read. So that's good for me. So, what is the most surprising thing you learned while working in in innovative uh, technology? Uh, I think it's probably what I what I said earlier that the people who are really good at what they do uh, are uh, are humble and really really interested in learning new things yeah. yeah you might assume that they're not because you know they know everything and uh, but but it's it's not true they they keep learning 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 i think that's that's um uh maybe not a total different, but yeah i think that's that's uh it stands out i would say yeah, I think I think that most people, when they from the outside, not within you know technology or within uh, innovation, they imagine this very very smart guy, like you know, like Einstein. He knows everything, and mm -hmm. he has this very bright idea nobody thought about. But but actually, it's it's so much more like collaborating and doing things together, and yeah. and. Most most good, big inventions from technology, in any case, are not one man's show. So, although yeah. like when we think about Apple, we think about Steve Jobs, but he he did not create it alone, and he, he did not he was not the first one to think about it, right? Mm -hmm. But still, everybody thinks that he is like the brain. And, yeah. and I'm not underestimating Steve Jobs. I'm not saying yeah. he 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 just didn't do it alone. That's what I'm saying. And, yeah. And maybe he and, knew how to bring the right people. I don't know. Yeah, and, and even he could not make uh, a coding for the iPhone that is conductive and doesn't corrode and uh, makes it possible to sell iPhones for not for a hundred thousand dollars per piece, but you know for the price they cost. Um, yeah, and so yeah, it's it's you need lots of different uh, expertise, and uh, I guess on a small scale, even in our team, when I would say then that when we build something new. The best things are those where you cannot really tell whose idea it was. Yeah. Right? Because it's all, it's a mixture, a combination of different ideas. Yeah. And so you cannot pinpoint, oh, it was uh, that person's idea. Yeah, I think it's two things. One is for the outside, you know that this idea is is the merge of thoughts and brain power of, of different people. And that's why it's because it was diverse, the, the diversely created, it's it might be more resilient. But more yeah. than that, for for the team itself, the fact that you don't uh, you, you work together and everyone contributed, it's better to work this way. Uh, yeah. For sure, for the workers, for the employees, it, it, they, they enjoy it I think much so, yeah. more. Yeah, yeah, I think so, and at least that's how I think. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that's that's the best the best way to really innovate is is to collaborate and and uh, during these like this podcast and show, I talked to so many people and many of them in, indicated about co creation and collaboration and diversity and doing things together and and in general creativity is something that is not done alone. You know, many people think yeah. about Newton. You know that the apple fell on his head and now and and it doesn't work this way. Maybe uh, yeah. one one very specific thought about physics could work this way. But what we are creating right, right now is, is like so much more complex in a sense and that it's, it needs more people. Yeah, sure. I'm sure that even Newton met a lot of people, talked to a lot of people. Uh, yeah. He didn't have the web, but uh, still he could yeah. communicate with people. Yeah, for sure. You so you're right. So, so we're almost done. So I always ask most people that they come here, what's the number one tip for innovation leaders? Be curious. Yeah, it's it's like uh, Steve Jobs. He said, stay hung humble, stay hungry. And uh, what's the last one? Yeah, I think that this is what he said, right? I missed one thing. He said three things. Yeah. I'll go back to it. Stay humble. I would have to look that up. 
I'll get back. It's it's it's, it's he talks he talked in in Stanford, so I'll go back yeah. to the to, to when he talked, and then I'll give you the num the the sentence afterwards. So thank you for being here. If if people would like to hear more from you and contact you, wh where would they find you? Um, the, the, I'm I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, there is I, I think in the slides I put a, a there was one slide oh, that I yeah, put in right. where to find uh, me. Uh, there are different. That? Yeah, here it is. You're right. Yeah, I guess we can put it in the um, in the show notes below the video. Sure, um, sure, sure. So yeah, LinkedIn um, and website. Merge Flow. Visiting Merge Flow. right now was difficult, but uh, yeah, with COVID and all. But um, yeah, so that's how you can reach me. Yeah, sure. So thank you for your time. It's been such a pleasure, and and I really enjoyed it. And and to all of you change makers out there, thank you for joining us and have a great week. I'll see you next week with another interviewee. Well, thank Bye. you very much. And uh, yeah, I had a good time. I appreciate it. And uh, Me too. yeah, I hope it was uh, hope it was helpful. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure that people will be interested in learn from it. So thank you, Florent. Have a great day. Bye bye. You too. Ali. Bye. I'm Adima Zaukario, and you've been listening to the Invincible Innovation Podcast. Make sure to visit our website, invincibleinnovation.com, where you can learn more about our programs and my book, Innovating Through Chaos. I'll be waiting for you next week in our next episode. Thank you for listening.